Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. A board-certified neurosurgeon for nearly 20 years, Dr. Charles Rawlings became a lawyer in 2002, now specializing in medical malpractice, and he's the author of the book we're going to be talking about on the program today. It really is that complicated, a real-world examination of how men and women react differently to everyday situations. Dr. Rawlings, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Uh, thank you, Rick. It's great to be here. Love the book. So many things to talk about. And I want to start talking in the very beginning on this. This really isn't a marriage manual. I mean, you can get those and they're somewhat technical and they deal in uh, hypothetical situations. Basically, we're dealing, when I, when I said real world, that's what we're talking about here. Basically, your experiences and your experience in talking to a number of people, including a lot of women for this book. That's right, absolutely. This is definitely not a marriage manual. It's, it's not going to change your marriage around or anything like that, and it certainly is not meant to do so. It is truly real world. It's real experience. Uh, seen from my perspective, that's a mature male uh, back in the dating uh, relationship arena, and it's also a compilation of many, many other experiences and opinions, absolutely. What's interesting, as you start off the book, you're talking about you were happily married for 14 years. Uh, uh, yeah, I was. Out of 18, that's not bad. That's probably <laughs> probably above the uh, the national average. And you talk about, you know, you traveled together. Uh, you had a house, a very nice house, a nice life together, three kids together. And you ask the question, uh, why why did it end? Why do relationships end? When Why did this one end? And did it really have to end? As you really got to looking at it and sort of dissecting marriages and talking with people, would this information have helped you in trying to keep that relationship together? Uh, it probably would have, yes. Um, I, when you, when the when the your listeners read the book, as I hope they do, they will take away from it that marriages and and relationships, just not necessarily marriages, um, die for lack of of interest. They die from boredom as well as the baggage that people bring to them in the relationships, as well as multiple, multiple instances of power struggles. And people just give up unless you know, they're in a situation where they can't get out of the marriage for whatever reason there is. The book is called It Really Is That Complicated. The website for the book is it really is that complicated book.com where you can go to charlesrawlings.com. Information, of course, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can get all the information on Dr. Rawlings and then link on to his website to get information on the book. Let's start with planning, something that you talk about. And you say basically men are inherent planners. Let's, let's talk about that quality and how that works for us and against us. Sure. Um, men are, are definitely planners, or the majority of males are, especially when they care about something or someone, they want and will go to great lengths to plan out what's coming next. Um, they're also fixers. They like projects. They like to be involved. And that's where one of the big differences between men and women come in. Many times women don't want anything fixed. They just want to talk about a subject. They just want to air out their complaints. Whereas with a male, they, especially alpha males, they immediately spring into action and hear a complaint or hear a problem, and they're like, well, let's go fix it. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. And the woman is like, whoa, dude, I'm not, I'm not asking you to jump in and go, go fix my work situation. I'm just telling you the way it is, and I just need someone to listen and uh, perhaps give me advice, but certainly doesn't need to be fixed. Well, you point that out to women who are reading the book, that you really need to distinguish, okay, this is a situation uh, that needs fixed, which is fine, and if not, you need to say, we're having a discussion. I don't need you to take action on this right now. We are merely having a discussion. That is, that is so true, and that's, that's part of the problem uh, with communicating, particularly between males and, and females, men and women. Um, it's the, you need to have open communication, and once the woman feels comfortable enough saying, look, I'm just talking to you. I just want, perhaps I want your opinion, but you don't need to go fix it. Once they feel comfortable doing that, then you open up another avenue of communication. You talked to a number of women. Did you find, and you bring up something interesting, the fact that, that listening is so important in a relationship. Is that something that women say that we talk to you guys, 
and you blink like you understand, but we have a feeling you're not totally listening to what it is we're telling you. Oh, it's it's not only women. It's it's both it's both males, both men and women. The men will will say that the women don't listen, and the women will say that the men don't listen. It's just a blocked communication. Um, and what's also interesting is, and your your listeners will will find this out when they read the book, is that I have not met anyone who has read the book who doesn't come up to me and say, you know, I see myself in that book. I see my relationship in that book. You're absolutely correct. This is real life, a real life situation. You're listening to This Week in America. The book is It Really Is That Complicated. The website is It Really Is That Complicated Book.com. Book, of course, available all across the country. Go to Amazon and find out more information. Go to our website, This Week in America.us, and, and like kind of get information as well. You talk about travel and how important travel is in, in developing a relationship. And I'm thinking that uh, what we're going to talk about, some of the, the attributes of travel, would help keep a relationship together. Uh, you talk about that. You talk about in in one of your most recent relationships. You you'd said to the uh, to the woman, name the five places you would like to to visit that you haven't been there, and and we'll go to those. Talk about travel, how important that is, especially in the beginning stages of a relationship, and what it tells us about the future of that relationship. Travel is so important, uh, not only to an individual but also to relationships. And I'm sure your listeners will be nodding their head. As, as I go through this, I mean, relationships need to be built on trust and having fun with the other person, among other things. When you're traveling, the stress just builds up, particularly these days when you have to go through security, you, have, you know, there's going to be delays possibly. And, and when, you, when you have this stress put on a relationship, you're going to see the old patterns emerge, the old baggage emerge, how these how folks actually react and handle stress. And a relationship, especially a committed relationship as it goes into the future, is going to have stress put on it. And how do these people, how do these men and women deal with stress comes out in how they travel. If they just go through life, you know, saying, I'm, I'm cool, the stress doesn't bother me, it's something we handle together, it's no big deal. At the end, we're going to have fun. That is that is a very good tale for a future of a relationship. Someone starts cursing at the baggage handlers or the ticket agents over something that's not their fault. It's it's sort of a an indication as to how they're going to handle stress in their life. And nothing ever goes as you plan it. Nothing, especially in travel, nothing goes as you plan it. But if you're if Say you're in an airport and the flight's canceled and your partner just flips out. Um, that is a huge sign that they're going to have problems when something really major happens in, in, the, in the relationship. Um, a personal financial problem, a personal health issue, whatever. I mean, there are many, many, many other things besides a canceled plane that can injure one. On the positive side, you talk about commonality, and that's what you had with with the lady that you were dating at the time. I, and I think even in a marriage, it lets you focus and gives you something to share and something to talk about. If you're planning a trip that's three, four months from now, if, every time you, you, you hit a different stage in planning for that trip, you're sharing it with the person you're going with, and it does give you something to look forward to and share together. It's a commonality. You, you've got sort of this goal, and you're, you're seeing this as it's going to be a fun time. We can plan together, uh, and sure, there's going to be some hiccups along the way, and nothing ever goes as planned. But in, you know, for the most part, you're going to have the trip, and you're going to have fun with this particular person. The book is called It Really Is That Complicated. The website is it really is that complicated book.com. Charles Rawlings, our guest on the program. They'll also go to his website, charlesrawlings.com. Go to our website. You can link on it and get all that information. I, you mentioned, and this is fascinating when you think about it, days of the week to a woman really does have an impact on what she perceives as where this relationship is going. If you ask somebody out on a Tuesday, some might consider that to be sort of a second-tier tier date. What's wrong? I'm not good enough to go out on Friday or Saturday? I, that, that was a real eye-opener for me because one of my uh, women friends pointed that out, and... I'm, I was, it, it makes sense, but I was pretty shocked 
They're like, I never yeah, would have thought I mean, of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, if if this woman doesn't rank a Saturday night into a Sunday, and you call her on a Tuesday, that is a big red flag for that woman. And I'm like, I can assure you that men do not think in those in that in that way. That we're we're like, well, we're free on Tuesday night. Why don't we see if we can go go out with someone? We don't rank. The, the days of the week. Yeah, and it's like, I can't wait till Saturday to see you, so I want to move it up, and we're going to we're going to do it on Tuesday this time. You talk about men by nature being afraid to make commitments, and you're talking there about trial balloons, and we all do trial balloons. Even if you're married and you're thinking about, I'd like to get a new car, or I'm thinking about, maybe I'd like to move, that type of thing. You're throwing out the trial balloons because you just really don't want to come out and say that. You're with the, the woman that eventually became your wife, and you go to your favorite museum in New York City. You go to your favorite uh, painting there, and you're throwing out this trial balloon to see, okay, with this relationship, go the next step to marriage. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, it's, it, you're right. I mean, um, and, and trial balloons are sent up primarily because you want to test, or the person wants to test the waters, and, and perhaps you're a bit, Scared, or you have some trepidations about whatever it is that you're going to be presenting to to your significant other. And it, you're right; it could be a car, it could be moving, it could be I want to change jobs, whatever it is. Um, particularly, and in this case, it was you know, would you like to get married? And there are men will hint around, and they will throw up trial balloons about all these major decisions in the relationship and what the woman says even inadvertently and many times they're going like oh yeah you did mention that and yeah that was my response then but i didn't really think you were serious any any sort of trial balloons from a male are serious and women need to see them as that because they're just they're they're like okay what would you say about this or what would you say about this theor- theoretically happening and it's it's we want to see what your reaction is before we actually commit to something. So you asked the question, basically, do you want to get married? And the answer was? To whom? <laughs> Not the answer that you were <laughs> looking for at that particular point in time. But, well, I mean, from a technical standpoint, it's like, okay, you're, you're right. I mean, there was nothing specific about it. So. And then when you finally did ask her, you said that uh, you were the Matterhorn. And at that point, she said, yes, she would marry you. Sure, yeah. And you blame that on the high altitude. <laughs> <laughs> Being somewhat uh, comical, yeah. <laughs> the book is, it really is that complicated book.com. That's the secret of the book. We're learning things, but learning things, again, in a real world where there's some humor, there's a, a lot of serious things going on. We're going to rapidly run out of time, but I highly recommend the book, the website. It really is that complicated book.com. You talk about power, financial issues, boredom we've, we've addressed. I want to talk about renewal of self because that's so important. And one of the questions you you have people ask themselves in the book is, do you know who you are and do you really accept who you are? And are you self-aware? And that's, that's really what the entire last chapter is about. And the, your listeners who read this will, will recognize that these are some of the major questions. The, 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 what, you know, the question you ask is, are you self-aware? Are you, do you know yourself? And if you don't know yourself, then there's really no way that you can get into a relationship with someone else and have no fear and support this person and be their partner and have their back at all all the times because you don't know yourself. And if you know, you just don't have your own self knowledge. In other words, you just don't have you know your your stuff together, so to speak. And that is. You've got to know yourself first, and then once you figure out who you are, then you can be comfortable with yourself. Or if you're not comfortable, you can try and change whatever it is. Then you have no fear, and if you have no fear, then you can be accepting and listen to the other person. And you don't have to, you don't have feel the need to disrespect them. You're not really competing with them. You know yourself. You're self-aware, and you have no fear. And you're accepting whatever the other person wants to bring to the relationship. One of the questions you also ask, is your soul alive? And you can think back maybe to yourself, maybe to other people you know. After years of marriage, that soul isn't there anymore. For whatever reason, and a lot are outlined in the book, we we sort of lose that. You do, and your listeners, 
I'm sure are probably nodding their head is like, you know, you go, you get up in the morning, you do the same thing, you have pro, you have your work, you have, you know, your kids at home, you have the school, and then you go home and go to bed. Uh, so where is your soul? What, where are your passions? What's happened to you as an individual? Where are your goals? What, what were your dreams? Where did you want to go? What did you want to do? And people lose that, and they become boredom, and become bored themselves, and they lose their soul. I will close with a spontaneous text that you had from a female friend, and she said, life truly starts when you reach the end of your comfort zone. Second to that. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. That's when life begins. It really is that complicated is the name of the book. Our guest on the program is Dr. Charles Rawlings. His website is it really is that complicated book.com. It's available, of course, at Amazon all around the country. Information on his website, charlesrawlings.com. You can also go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on for all that information. Much more to talk about, Dr. Rawlings. We look forward to having you back on the program. Excellent job. And again, I'll go back to you. Talk about relationships in a real life way, and we'll have some laughs as we go through and, uh, and read, especially sections talking about matchmakers. There's so much good stuff in the book that we haven't talked about. We'll have you back on the program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Rick. I appreciate it. You're listening to This Week in America at the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.